the king of the kings. The one who shares his glory with no one. The one that when we come before thee, our burdens are lifted, our tears are wiped, our weaknesses are strengthened with your might. You declare in your word that we should come boldly before that throne of grace to obtain mercy, to find grace to help in this very time of need. Lord, we have come. Lord, we have come. Your word declares out upon the mentioned name of Jesus. Every knee bow. Every tongue will confess that you are the Lord. Lord, may you reign in the midst of your people. May your spirit take ascendancy in our gathering. For where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. We decree and declare that in Jesus' name, may the word of God come forth. May the hearers hear the word of God. May every yoke be broken. Every closed door be opened. In the heart and heart, be softened. May they not hear my voice. May God, may they hear you. For your word is sharper than any two as so. It divides the spirit from the soul, the bone and the marrow. May you be exalted. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name that we are praying. Amen. Tell somebody his name is above all names. I don't know about the name that you know. There are many people who know the name of rivers created by God. There are many people who, name the, who know the universe, the, the solar system. There are many people who know the autonomy of human beings. But there is a name that we must know. It's above every name. Tell somebody his name is above every name. And the Bible says that name, when it was announced 2,000 years plus ago, the angel came down from heaven. And met Mary. When he met Mary, he said, you shall give birth to a child. And that shall call his name Jesus. And that Jesus, from eternity to eternity, whatever that you mention the name Jesus, every knee bow. So the other time when you read the Bible, he told the disciples to go and baptize in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of, of, the, of, this, uh, of the Holy Spirit. When you read the Bible, they never did that. Oh, Hallelujah. They never did that. What did they do? They went and baptized in the name of Jesus. Which is the name of the Father? Which is the name of the Son? Which is the name of the Holy Spirit? Oh, tell somebody we have a name. Oh, we have a name. Oh, hallelujah. Is somebody better than Trump's name? And he can go around because he's the president of the United States. Go to places and doors will be open. How much more you who have the name, you bear the name of the kings of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah. Doors need to be opened. Mountains need to bow. Valleys need to be filled because you have a God who is above all names. Bible says you have exalted his name above what? All things. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited about the name of Jesus because that name made me who I am. That name causes the demons to free. That name causes sicknesses to be healed. That name causes burden to be lifted. Oh, I have a God. Oh, hallelujah. And I believe that we have a Savior who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we could even think of acts of him, according to his power that is at work in us. Amen. We've been treating this series called, Who Got Your Years? The first week, we learned something about whoever have your ears controls your view, your thought, and the way you see the world. Oh, hallelujah. The second week, we learned something called that you need to be, if you are not led by the Spirit of God, then you are led by Satan. There are only two forces. We learned in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23, that man that was born, that walk, that sleep, it's not engineered to be led by himself. That somebody needs to be in charge of your life. Somebody needs to control you. And we learn that if God is not in control, then Satan is what? 
in control. So we read in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 14, that as many who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the Son of God. We also read in 2 Corinthians, sorry, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we read that God doesn't talk to us in our mind. Talk to us in our spirit. Amen. God talked to us in what? In our spirit. The revelations of God come through our spirit. So Bible says that, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Bible says, what man knows the things of the man except the spirit of man that is in him? As you are sitting now, whatever you are thinking, nobody knows except the spirit that is within you. He said, likewise, nobody knows the man of God except the spirit of God that is within God. So Bible says that God has given us this spirit so that we can be led according to the will of God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Today we are going to learn something very precarious. Anything that says that don't, it means that there are consequences, right? When we say do not go through this war, what we mean is that if you try to go through this war, you're going to hurt yourself. If we say, don't touch the life warrior, the electricity, if you touch it, you'll be executed. Are, are you understanding me? We say the knife is dangerous. So do not what? Use the knife because it can cut you. That's why when anybody buy a gun, he doesn't put it in an open place. He hides it. Why? Because there's a don't attach to it. It can kill. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So when the Bible says that man, that walk, doesn't have ability to live by himself, they mean there are consequences and there are problems when you do that. And we are going to learn today based upon that word so that the name of God shall be glorified. Tell somebody, prison. Many Christians are living in prison. Do you know that? Many Christians, devil have already captured their soul. They are walking on the surface of this earth, but they live in hell. And they must spread on this earth as a human being. So no matter what word of God you tell them, they are being led, they are being controlled, they are being manipulated. And you ask yourself, why can't they change? They can't change because they have rejected something called the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Christ told us something. That you can speak against the Father. You can say, I don't care about the Father. You are still saved. Because the Father operated before the Holy Spirit. Then you can say, Jesus is a stupid man. He's a prostitute child. You can say whatever you call. Jesus operated before the Holy Spirit. But the day that Christ went to heaven and released the Holy Spirit onto this earth, anyone who rejects the Holy Spirit Devil has captured your soul. You live in a prison. You are completely under the coverage. Your insurance policy is covered by Satan. Your bank account number is controlled by Satan. The way you dress, Satan is the one choosing those dresses for you. So it's very hard for you to see why you cannot Dress like a Christian, modestly. You will dress like an unbeliever. For indeed, you are being controlled by the, the by, by what? By the prince of unbelievers. Oh, is somebody here with me? Psalm 37 verse 23 declared, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. The Bible says that if Christ set you free, you shall be what? As we learned last week, freedom is not as we think it is. It does not exist. Rather, it's two words that have been combined. Free in a kingdom. Freedom. Oh, hallelujah. You are free in where? In a kingdom. So whatever kingdom that you're operating, you are free there. 
If you operate in that kingdom, they are free to make themselves naked. They are, they are free to kill. They are free to do everything. They don't see nothing wrong with that because their freedom is based upon the kingdom. Oh, is somebody here with me. There's nothing called freedom. Like many of the women who say that, oh, I'm emancipated. You are not emancipated from anywhere. There's nothing called freedom. I'm in America, I'm free. No, you are free in the devil's kingdom. Look, if you look at yourself, Anytime that you said we are free, check the word of God if you are going against the word of God. And mostly, we are going against what? The word of God. Oh, I'm free. No man can control me. You are going against what? The word of God. Oh, I'm free. I'm not under my father. Oh, so I'm free. I can do whatever I want. You are going against what? The word of God. Oh, I'm free to wear whatever I want to wear. You are free. Going against what? In any time you are free from the word of God, you are operating strictly under devil's control. You are not free. It's either you are God's servant or you are Satan's slave. I will explain. God uses us as what? Servant to propagate his purposes. Satan enslaves us and control us and manipulate us. There are two different things. We are servants of God. We serve his purposes and his agenda. Satan is forcing you as a slave to wait 12 hours and give you one bread of loaf to eat. Or oh, are you understanding me? God, you are a servant. He will still let you sit at the table and eat after you have worked. There's two different things. So you need to choose something called a freedom. And so the Bible says that if the son make you free, then you will be what? Free indeed. If the son make you what? Free, you shall be what? Free indeed. If the son have not set you free, why does the son have to set you free? Because we were born into Adam. Satan tricked Adam in the garden and took our birthright from us. We became his slave. He even told Jesus Christ, it was given to me in the book of Luke chapter 4. And if you, Jesus, will bow to me, I will give you the word. Oh, hallelujah. He shows him the kingdoms of the world. He shows him the beauty of the world. And he said that if you, Jesus, you bow to me, all these things were given to me by Adam. I give it to you back. And he was lying though. You know, Satan, you never tell the truth. All that you needed for Jesus to bow. When Jesus bowed, he said, stupid man, you bow to me. You want me to give you the kingdom? I will not give it to you. All that Satan does is to change our purpose and our agenda, mislead us from the plans and the will of God that God has given to us so that he can later on laugh at you. And that's why somebody can kill somebody immediately and all of a sudden, he feels, why should I do that? Satan, Satan. It's called oppressing, depressing, possession. And once he takes over you, you do whatever you want. After that, he leaves you. And you bear the consequences yourself. Oh, hallelujah. The guy is very wicked. He will leave you. He's not going to the prison with you. You go to prison by yourself. And that time, you are, you are licking your hands and tapping your hands. and say, oh, God, why should I do this? It is too late. Because you choose not to obey God. Freedom. It's a choice word. Freedom means you have to choose where to operate in the kingdom. So when you read the book of Joshua, Joshua told us that life and death is before you. But me and my household, we will choose the ways of the Lord. Whom are you choosing today as you are sitting there? Whoever you choose will control what you are hearing. God will speak to you to lead you. Satan will manipulate you to lead you. So whoever got your ears, that is where you are going to operate from. Oh, hallelujah. We need deliverance. Tell somebody, I need deliverance. So in the book of Romans chapter 7, verse 22 to 24, for I delight, everybody sitting here, do you know you delight in the law of God? You want to do the things of God, but why can't we? Why can't we? 
Why can't we? Why are we struggling, including me? We all see the beautiful legs walking on the street. We all want to be like the unbelievers. Oh, I am lying. That is what we want to be. We compete with unbelievers in the name of God. Bible says, I delight in the law of God. According to the inward man. So within you, you are saying that, God, I want to do this. Immediately you step up, you do the wrong thing. Oh, I, I, do you identify yourself here? Immediately you step out. You pray last night. God, I will humble myself. I will love my wife. What did happen? That day, that is even the worst day between you and your husband or your wife. Why are we doing that? It's not us. There's something who has taken control over our life. And we need to be delivered and release ourselves from devil manipulations and control so that the Holy Spirit will take charge of our life. He's a gentleman. He doesn't force himself on us. We need to make that decision so that Holy Ghost will take over and we can do the things of God. Oh, tell somebody hallelujah. hallelujah. But I see another law, Romans 7, 23, in my members, warring against, in the, against the law of my mind and bringing me, what does it bring you to? Captivity. Oh, somebody here with me. It brings you to where? Prison. Anytime the Holy Spirit is not leading you, you are in prison. That's why the Bible says that if the Son of God set you free, you shall be what? Free indeed. Those in prison, they are free walking within that four square. But are they free? No. They are in prison. You think that the minister and the, and the, and the thing that the language that you are speaking are set you free. No, no. You are under a control and captivity. Verse 24 says, oh, a wretched man I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Your body, I told you last week, your body is your enemy. Those of you who were here last week, you hear? I say your body, which is your flesh, is your number one enemy. It's not your mother in that village. Oh. It's not your grandmother in that village. Oh. It's not the people that you think that are witches so. Oh. Your body that you, is, you are possessing is your number one enemy. In the body that you speak lies. In the body that you see that last. In the body that you conceive so many evil thoughts. The heart is in the body. The mind is in the body. The ears is in the body. The nose is in the body. Everything that you possess is in your body. The flesh. That is your number one enemy. Stop pointing. In Africa, every old lady is a witch. What is wrong with us? You see, I always say that we have a problem. Instead of solving our problem, we put the blame on somebody. And we zero in on that person and we begin to pray. You are praying from January, from January to December. The person is still alive. Leave that person alone. Is somebody here with me? Amen. In Romans 8, 36 to 37, if the Son therefore shall set you free or make you free, he shall be free indeed. But there's something that you need to do according to the book of James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourself therefore to God, then you can resist the devil. Our problem is that our submission is not complete. Or uh, is somebody here with me? Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6, if your obedience is complete, You'll be able to arrest all disobedience. Or oh, is somebody here? Bible says you are submission needs to be complete. Coming to church doesn't mean that you have submitted. Our problem is we are walking by sight. Tell somebody you are walking by sight. Oh, speak it louder. I am walking by sight. Diagnose your problem so that you can get a medication to help you. You are walking by sight. All your, all your plans, your view are based on this earth. You are walking by sight. You see, we know that the damage devil can do, but we still accept what he offers. Do you know that? We know, I'm repeating, everybody knows that devil come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. 
But yes, we open our door. Devil, come in. Oh, hallelujah. And this is our, this is our plan. When devil come in, I will say in the name of Jesus Christ, and buy him and he will free. Bible never said that. He said, submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he will free. If you let devil come in, he will speak. If you allow God come in, he will do what? He will speak. Whoever have your ears, you will follow that person. Christ told something, a story. He said, my sheep hear my voice. Are you a sheep of God? Many Christians are goat. And I told you, goat cannot be led. You know that. That's why the Bible says, as many who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You cannot lead a goat. A sheep and a goat is crossing the street. A car is coming. The goat will jump and go to safety. The sheep will stand there and be hit. What do I have saying that? In order to follow God, you need to be like a sheep, a stupid person. You don't have a right. You don't know your way and left and right. The sheep followed the shepherd. He led them to a greener pasture. He led them to a place they would drink and they would be certified. The sheep follow the shepherd and he protect them from the wolf. Are you a goat or are you a sheep? Because the sheep hear his voice and the goat hears Satan. He even, even told a story that in the last days he will separate the sheep and the goat. Didn't he say that? And the sheep into his right hand, the goat into his left. You know, I don't know what is wrong with the left side. So anybody who stands on the left side, you are in trouble. You need to stand on the right side. That is called righteousness. Oh, I, I, are you understanding me? There's nothing called left, left-trustness. There's something called what? Righteousness. Right hand of God. It's called righteousness. Standing right with God. Don't be a goat and stand on the left-trustness. Stand on the what? Righteousness. So that the name of God will be glorified in you. Oh, Hallelujah. I hope, I'm, I hope that God is speaking to you. When you read 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 going, he said, do not love the word or the thing that are in the world, for all that is in the world is the last of the eye, the last of the flesh, and the pride of life. And all these things are passing away. The thing that the devil is using to entice you, the thing that the devil is using to trap us, the thing that the devil is using to mislead us, by which all those things are what? Passing away. God is going to destroy this world. Your address is that you are craving for. A time is coming. You don't need them anymore. In heaven, we don't wear dresses. The body is changed. A glorified body. God clothes you with glory. If you don't know, that is what Adam lost. So the first thing he told God, I am naked. Since that day, man is trying to clothe themselves. Some of them with mini skirt. Some of them with tattoos. Some of them with some alley that pop up like a Mercedes Benz. Some of them paint themselves like a circus people. Man is trying to clothe herself. The man, they think that when you are macho with uh, six pack or ten pack, you will die with all that. It will not save you. So you see them every day, they are jogging. They die so early with all their jogging. It doesn't say. Bible says physical exercise, profit what? A little, very, very little, little, little. Spiritual exercise, profit much. So don't try to clothe yourself. Let God what? Clothe you. And you'll be saved. Clothing yourself, I'm taking you nowhere. Bible says, if anybody loves the world, you are God's enemy. I didn't say it. Bible says, whoever loves the world, God have a problem with you. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. But as long as that you are focused, that's why Bible says, where there's no vision, the people do what? Perish. Whatever your vision is, that will determine how you work with God. If your vision is, I'm not saying that don't go to school, don't make money, 
Because we need all these things to stay on this earth. But do not make that thing your God. Ask yourself, if you are going to study for exams, you wake up all night, right? To study. How many of you wake up all night to pray? Wake up all night to study the word of God. Ask yourself, when, when did you do that? But when it comes to exams, you pant for it, you yell for it. Which is your God? That exams have become your God. That certificate, you are craving for it. You are yearning for it. Because you think that that is what you are like. Bible says man's life that does not consist in abundance of the things that he possesses. We have made abundance of the things that we possess as what? Something that we crave. Amen? Oh, is somebody here with me? Is somebody here with me? Your life does not consist in that. It's not in the car. Many people think that if they drive Mercedes Benz, they will get respect. Many people think that if they have Range Rover, they will get what? Respect. So they will do everything, even kill people, to have what? Range Rover. I want you to listen to it, the name very carefully. Range what? Rover. You're going to roll over. Amen. They do everything to become rich. And after they are duped and they have, they have steal from people, they come to the house of God. God has blessed me. With God, Satan has blessed you. The check will take the money, but you will not receive any blessing from the Lord. Bible says it's not in man that walk. To direct his steps. The steps of the good man or a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. Habakkuk 2 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the judge shall live by faith. Romans 1 17. Say it in different things. For therein the righteousness of God is revealed. From what? Faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10, 38, 39. He says it differently. Now, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall not have no pleasure in him. That is what the Bible says. The just shall live by faith. You don't have to draw back. Righteousness of God are revealed from faith to faith. Oh, amen. Bible says the same scripture is said in Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what say it? The word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of what? Faith, which I'm preaching to you today. When you jump to the 17, so then faith came about what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. Many of us, we can't please God because we can't hear God. And if you cannot please God, Bible says the angels of the Lord surround those who fear him. Those who please God are the people who fear him. It's not when you make up your mind that I fear God that the angels of the Lord will encamp around you. They encamp those who obey him. They encamp around those who walk with the Lord. That's why Bible says in Psalm 91, blessed is the man that dwell in the secret place of what? The Most High. He shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Then you will say of the Lord is my refuge, my strong tower, in whom that what? I trust. That's why they will be able to say that you come against me with spears. I come against you in the name of the Lord. You go and do that. Goliath will cut your head off. Because you are not walking with the Lord. You are walking with Satan. And masquerading as a Christian. The only thing Christianity about you is Sunday you show up. Even today, what I'm preaching, let, let's, let's close. I've got about 10 scriptures. Let me ask you one of them. You cannot even mention it. You cannot even mention one of them. But let me ask you, what, what is this girl, uh, Jason Baba or Biba song? You tell me what song he sang this year. You know the album that came out. That you call yourself a Christian. Is somebody here with me? Hebrews 11 says that without faith it's impossible to place him. He that coming to God should believe that he is. God is not a statue 
God is not a rubber stamp God. That you do whatever you want and you come, God bless me, and you rubber stamp it. Boom, he's not Trump. He's God. Are you understanding me? He doesn't lie. He won't say this today and tomorrow say another thing. His word forever he is the same. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Oh, let me quickly try to bring you home. Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 to 22, but for if after they have escaped the pollution of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and they again and target themselves and overcome by Satan, their latter end is worse with them than beginning. That's why many Christians our latter end is so bad. As a matter of fact, if you check your life, we were better off being an unbeliever. It doesn't mean that being an unbeliever was good. Because when you came to the Lord, you did not allow God to lead you. Have you read a scripture? He said the unclean spirit is cast out. He roamed about looking for a place. When he said, let me check my house if it's empty. When he came, the Holy Ghost is not leading you. Bible says that you go and bring seven other strong demons. So let's say you have fornication problem. That is the only one that was troubling you. Now he brought death, he brought lie, he brought wickedness, unforgiveness. He brought all the things that he can bring. Now instead of one, you have eight. So the Bible says your latter end is what? Worse. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 to 22. Your latter end is what? Worse. You won't get better unless you get delivered. Unless you allow the word of God now, you begin to hear God's word again. That's why I say, who got you a year? If you can't get deliverance without you get hearing God. Let me tell you, many of you think that by laying of the hands with the head and the pastor sitting on you, bathing and giving you that water to drink, you can be delivered. It's a lie. Nobody gets delivered that way. The only deliverance that you have is when you begin to walk with God. My sheep hear my voice and they what? They follow me. When you follow God, there is anointing to protect you. When he led the Israelites, he led them by pillar of fire in the night. It guides them. Pillar of pride in the morning, it leads them. His angels surrounded around him. You have to understand that. That is not just, oh, the pastor prayed for me, I'm delivered. You are not delivered. You are delivered only when you walk with God. Bible said the righteous run to him and they are saved. Galatians chapter 5 verse 25. We all believe into the spirit. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. You cannot say that I've accepted Christ and walk according to the flesh. That word, that says for God so loved the word is a spiritual word. You have received it. Once you receive it, you need to walk in that spirit. So many of you, you are praying, you are not getting results. You don't understand because you are not hearing God. Bible says you are not fighting against flesh and blood. So in 2 Corinthians 2.10, he said that even though you walk in the flesh, you do not war in the flesh. Amen. You do not what? War in the flesh. Your weapons are what? Are not carnal. They are mighty through God of pulling down stronghold. So if you can't hear God, how can you use that weapons? If you are not following God, Bible says you are weapon that you need to defeat Satan. It's not a long prayer, so it's not that fasting. Bible says to obey is better than what? Sacrifice. If you obey God, that so-called long prayers, long all night, it will cease. I'm not saying you will not pray. But you won't waste time. You would rather use that time to go for evangelism. You use that time to study God's word. You use that time to counsel somebody. You won't waste time. Now, one thing I see, most Christians that pray, they are praying selfish prayer. Do you know that? Because the Bible says, go into the word and pray the gospel. All that you see them is already in need praying. Not that they are praying for anointing to break your cool. 
They are praying that God, their problem will be solved. That's the only thing they are concerned. They have nothing to do with Christianity, but they are self. Selfish prayers. And after they pray, they feel that they feel good. The next day, they see that the problem is like a mountain standing before them. It hasn't gone nowhere. Amen. Because it's God. Your weapons are not what? They are not carnal. They are mighty only through God. Pulling down stronghold. And that God that can put that stronghold, you don't know him. You don't hear his voice. You don't follow him. You don't go to Gogota. You don't carry the cross. He said, forgive. He said, I won't forgive. He said, let go. He said, I won't let go. He said, love your neighbor. He said, I don't love my neighbor. I love my family only. He said, seek the kingdom of God and all other things can be added. He said, I will seek the kingdom of this world and God, you have to stamp it. I wish that we have God in our pocket. Bible says nobody gives him counsel. He said, I am the Lord. I bring evil, I bring good. Nobody gives me counsel. There's nobody besides me. If so, I would have told you. Remember that. Remember that. Ephesians, you read it very carefully every day. Ephesians says, Bible says that for you wrestle not against flesh and blood. You need God. Tell somebody you need God. Whether you like it or not, the demons will come. Bible says we wrestle. The word wrestling, it means a close combat battle. It's not boxing. We wrestle. Whether you like it or not, Satan will tackle you, choking you. Whether you like it or not, Satan will twist your hands behind your back. Whether you like it or not, many of us, Satan have lifted up and begin to do what? Slam down. You need God. Let me bring in an end. Job chapter 23 verse 12 says, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. You know, I want you to check your life when you first became a believer. Your desire for the things of God. Where has that gone? We have grown past God. We have matured past the will of God. We are now specialized in our own ways. Listen, God doesn't have grandchildren. God have what? Children. Tell somebody, God doesn't have grandchildren. So you don't grow from being a child. In the sight of God. Don't bring that worldly system that you are grown, you have a child, and the child has given birth, so therefore you are grandfather. You are not, there's not, God is not your grandfather. He's still the father. And a child must obey. God doesn't have children that are grown up out of his sight. Every one of us are children of God. We are the sons of God. So you need to come to a point of realizing that you have nobody grown past God. That worldly system that we have, you grown up, you leave your mother and your father and you go and settle your life, is not applicable when you come to God. And that is where our number one problem is. If we can change that and walk with God as children and obey him and don't grow from the faith. Many, many Christians right now, if you tell them that the word of God about marriage, they say, that was then, I reject it. And they will even do tofiakwa to you. You are telling God tofiakwa. That was then. That will be now when the word of God will judge you. On judgment day, you are not going to be judged by Oprah. You are not going to be judged by American standard. You are going to be judged by the word of God. Who is controlling your years? Who is telling you all these things? Some of you, when you were in Africa, you were so humble. You came here all of a sudden. When you were in Africa, you understand Christianity. You dress modestly. Now, when you are dressing, you are in America, so you need to Americanize. You are in trouble in the judgment day. And I pray that we will repent. I pray that someone will be a word in our spirit. That blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standed in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but your delight shall be in the word of God. 
that you can meditate upon it day and night. That your delight is to please God. That the word of God, that says that faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God shall be your portion. You will not make a decision without consulting God. You will not make a decision without checking. Does it go against the will of God? And I pray that we can change. Change is available for those who are humble. Christ can set you free. And you'll be free indeed. But you have to make that decision. I end by saying, my 2, 11, 15, who has your ears? Who is controlling you? What are your views about the things of God? God's word is not separate from his word. When he created a word, the word that he has given has been controlling the word since ages. And I end to say, who got your ears? God richly bless you. Amen.